Hi everybody, in this demo we're going to look at how to not really exchange, extend but how to change this program to make it more efficient. What I mean by that is we're going to get the same we're going to get the same result but we're going to use fewer lines of code to do it. So I've got my example code here in my IDE and I've just run it quickly. The first line assigns three into the count variable. It then outputs it, print count. So it's done that three there. Then it takes one away from that count variable and set, stores the result, assigns the result back into count. So it effectively takes one away and then overwrites that three. So three minus one is two. Stores it back in the count variable, overwrites it, and then outputs the count variable again. So that's the two. And then it repeats the process here and output takes one away to get one and outputs the one. What you might notice with this code is that I'm repeating this line, lines two and three, one, two, three times, which doesn't seem like much, I'll give you. But if I wanted to count down from say 10, I might have to set, set the count variable to 10 up here, and then I have to repeat these two lines 10 times each, which is a lot of code, which is unnecessary. What we can do when you're in this situation and you find yourself writing the same instructions again and again and again is use iteration. So we're going to put the lines we want to repeat into a loop. And to do that, I need to think really carefully about which lines I do want to repeat. I only want to set my counter once here at the start. So that's not going to go in the loop. But I do want to output the count and take one away several times. So those two lines are going to go in the loop. What I'm going to do with my loop, I'm going to start it here, I'm going to type while. And I'm going to use the count variable there. I'm going to set up a condition here, just like I do with selection. So this condition tells me when the loop should run. If this condition is true, the loop should run. So I want to loop until the counter gets down to one. So the way we do that in computing is say, while the counter is greater than or bigger than zero. That means keep running while the counter is more than zero. And then I put colon at the end of my line again, just like I do with selection. And I press enter again, and it indents for me. Now, the lines of code I wanted to repeat are these two. So I'm going to take them, I'm going to cut them, I'm going to put them inside the loop. Code that's in, you can tell that code, when code is inside the loop because it's indented like that. And I'm using my tab key just above caps lock there to indent. Now I don't need those lines anymore because this loop will now repeat these lines. Let's have a look at it in action. And to do that, I'm going to use faster debug here which will show it as a line at a time you can see it's running fast debug down here and you'll be able to see my variables changing up there so at the moment we're on line one as i move through this code we've done line one now and you'll see that the value of three has been assigned into the count variable there now i'm on my loop while count is greater than zero actually so the the loop checks the count variable is it greater than zero? Well, yes, it's three. So that means we'll go into the loop. So it'll go into the loop and it'll do line four and you'll see the output come out there. Count is currently three, so it's outputted it. Now it does count minus one and you'll see it's changed it in the variables menu there because it's subtracted. It goes back up to the loop and it checks to see if it needs to repeat again. So while count is greater than zero, well, count at the moment is two. We can see that over here. So that condition is true. So the program does go back into the loop, outputs the count again. We'll see that happen down here. And then this line subtracts one from count and assigns it back into count. So it overwrites it. Back up to the loop. Is count still greater than zero? Yes, it is. Output the count again. There we go. It outputs the one. Take one away. Count is now zero. So we go back up here. Is count greater than zero? No, it's not. It's zero. So we skip these indented lines inside the loop, and that's the end of the program there. We've finished.
if there were more lines of code here, then when we, when we get down to count zero, the program will skip down to those lines of code and do those afterwards. That's how to use a loop to replace lots of code that is the same again and again and again. And we call that technique iteration.